Good morning and welcome to St. John the Evangelist Parish this 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. <coughs> Please stand and join in singing our opening song, Table of Plenty. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, the goodness of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning Father. Welcome to all who join us on this festival week and a special welcome to Roger and Lynette Block who gather with their family as they celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. We do so as we hear God is pleased with the understanding of Solomon as he asks for the gift of wisdom. 
For the times we have sinned, for selfishness reasons, let us ask forgiveness of our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Together we pray glory, glory to, God to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God, the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us. Grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks. be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field <coughs> which a person finds and hides again and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a great little book called Thank God Ahead of Time. It's a life of perhaps one of the first male born, American born males who might become a saint within the next few years. Father Solanus Casey, a Cabochon Franciscan priest who died in Detroit but was born right here in the state of Wisconsin. Ordained in 1904, his studies were very difficult, so he wasn't allowed to become a preacher or an associate pastor, never a pastor, but he was delegated to be a porter, a receptionist at some of the local monasteries. And as people came to the monasteries asking questions, seeking prayer, he would pray for people and people began to notice something and what they notice is that their prayers were being answered. And they uh, attributed this to the faithfulness of Father Solanus. And two things that Father Solanus would say to people who came for prayers is, one is, have a mass said for your intentions. And secondly, when you're asking, begging God, thank God ahead of time for whatever response God is going to give. But as the author of this book, Thank God Ahead of Time, was interviewing Father Solanus, one of the questions he asked was, why did God choose you? Why did God choose you to be an instrument of healing in the 20th century? And his response was very simple, direct, and humble. He says, I suspect it is because I believe God is. And Father Slanus' entire life, especially his adult life, was 
all centered around that faith that God is. And that is what he asked people that came for prayer. Believe, give thanks, trust that God truly is active and alive in our lives. And I mention that in light of today's gospel as we hear this parable of the, the treasure buried, the pearl in the sea, because it's a metaphor of something much greater, the greatest gift of all, and that is the gift of God. St. Ignatius of Loyola said something very similar in one of his principles of discernment. He says, when we move away from sin and grow closer and closer following the will of God, we begin to notice peace and joy and consolations and contentment as we let go of our attachments to sin and embrace God investing ourselves in God we find the gift of peace and there's two probably primary ways where we find God in our lives and one is in the sacraments we just listen to people as they speak of their experience in the confessional I feel so cleansed, I feel so holy, I feel so close to God as we ask forgiveness. And those are all ways in which God is blessing us for turning and repenting. Or people who come forward to communion, sometimes they're just flowing with tears because of their joy of being so close to Jesus. As a priest who often anoint people who are dying, I see the power of the sacrament of the sick and dying. I told you a few years ago, shared with you a story of one of the parishioners who was dying in the nursing home. And as I went to his room, there he was thrashing in bed, very agitated. And as I began the sign of the cross for the prayer of the sick, total peace, total calm. And afterwards, his wife said, did you see that? And I said, yes, I saw that. The peacefulness, the calm. <laughs> but also, how often we say we recognize God in nature, maybe a beautiful sunrise, a rainbow. Uh, just as an aside, I remember Father Martin Pabel, a Cabochon priest, a doctor of psychology who preached and worked in the diocese for many, many years. And he said, after reading the National Geographic, I think it was back in the 60s, on the Big Bang Theory of Creation, he said, when I read that, I knew it was totally false to think that creation did not happen because God is. And even scientists today, as they listen and read the theory of the Big Bang Theory, they says, life, he said, just look at a molecule, how intricate and involved it is. That does not happen by accident. It happens because there is a God who is involved in creation. The beauty of nature, last night I was talking to a woman who 25 years ago was in Alaska. One of the trips was went to Denali. Very seldom do you see the tip of Denali because it is so high, over 20,000 feet. About 10% of the time it is revealed and in their group they said, oh, there it is. And she's looking straight ahead and I don't see it in the lady next to her says, you got to look up. And as she looked up and saw the top, she began weeping because of the beauty of God's nature. And even last night as she's telling me this, she's crying 20 years after the fact because that beauty of Denali is impressed in her mind and heart. <laughs> Father Solanus Casey, soon to be a saint, lived his whole life in a, an austere, prayerful way because he believed God is. We gather on this Sunday morning, hopefully not because we are told to do so, but like Father Solanus, 
we believe that God is. So may we continue to live and strive to live our lives like the man who finds the treasure, the man who finds the pearl, to, to invest our whole lives in the treasure, not of silver or gold or a buried treasure or a fine pearl, but the greatest gift of all, and that is the gift of God who is with us. So we rise as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstance with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who with the Father and the Son is adorned and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. To God who desires to give us the fullness of life, we pray in confidence. For our festival weekend, May it provide enjoyment and safety for all who partake, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Lestecki, and all the church, that we may place a supreme value on seeking the reign of God and utilize all our talents to deepen our relationship with God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For confidence in God's love for each of us, that we may rely upon God's generous love to sustain us, and bring about good from all the experiences of our lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are engaged in evangelization and outreach, that they may cast a wide net through offering hospitality and dynamic witness to the good news to all they encounter, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For grace and insight, that we may utilize the traditions and practices that have sustained previous generations of Christians and be open to following the new inspirations of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have left the church, that they may be enlightened to return, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all suffering from the heat, that God will moderate the temperatures, help sufferers find relief, and help us show care for one another. And for the 50th wedding anniversary of Roger and Lynette Black, for whom this Mass is said, and for those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in your goodness, you sent your Son, Jesus, that we may know you are. In his name we trust all our prayers as he is Lord and Savior forever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord God, accept the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your many gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our way of life and lead us to eternal life with Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For out of compassion for the sins that are ours, Jesus humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, Jesus freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so we sing your praises with the angels and saints. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together at Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus always be with you. And with your let us offer each one another a sign of God's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. body of Christ, the 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 body of Christ.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ, the 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 body of Christ. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. body of Christ the 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 body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Good morning. My name is Katherine Rausch, and I am a member of Rooted, St. John's Young Adult Group for ages 18 to 35. Our next event will be Saturday, August 12th, and will feature soccer golf. For those who are unfamiliar, soccer golf is like mini golf, but played by kicking or throwing a soccer ball. As with all of our events, we encourage all young adults to attend. However, for this event, we would like to extend a special invitation to everyone who will be starting or returning to school this fall. We understand how busy the school year can be, so we are holding the August event earlier than usual to accommodate the start of the school year. If you would like to learn more, stop by our booth at the festival. We look forward to seeing you at our next event. Thank you. Please give prayerful consideration taking part in our Eucharistic Adoration Program. See the bulletin for details, days, and times. Registration for the Religious Education Program is now open. Details also in the bulletin. And our festival is underway. Please enjoy the fun food and bands. Also visit our various booths to learn more about the parish. Our parish pilgrimage to the Our Lady of Champion Shrine is August 19th. Please sign up in the narthex. Again, additional details in the bulletin. Let us pray. Gracious God, we have consumed the divine gift, the perpetual memorial of the passion of Jesus. Grant that this gift, which Jesus himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us into eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Saint Michael, Michael the the archangel, Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and errors of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Our Lady of the Mother of God, pray for us. This time I ask Roger and Lynette to come forward for their special anniversary blessing. If you're able, stand up on the first wood step there. I I invite the congregation to join me in blessing Lynette and Roger by extending your right hands as I pray the blessing prayer. Loving God, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning of creation, you created man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You bless the union of Roger and Lynette so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. We pray you look with kindness on them this day. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. We pray you renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace so that with family and friends they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. And Roger, you may kiss your bride. Two other announcements. One is the bake sale in the front of church as part of the annual festival. Please buy some treats on your way to the chicken dinner that begins in seven minutes. The festival ends at around 9.30. We're looking for strong backs and muscles to take down what they've been building for the last two weeks. Uh, So they'll start at 9.30 tonight and go till about two this morning. And then again, Again, tomorrow and all week from 9 a.m. till 3 and 6 p.m. till 9. So young men with muscles, please join us tonight and 
Let us clean up the festival till next year. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in God's peace.